Hey, hey, welcome to Encounter. My name is Kristen and I'm gonna be your host for the evening. Before we begin, I wanted to lay out how the night will look. Encounter was birthed with the purpose of promoting community and connection. And here at Seven Cities Church, we believe community and connecting are so important. Seven Cities Church is rooted with community being the foundation. We would absolutely love to be in person with you all this evening, but even apart, we expect tonight to be an evening of fellowship, worship, and most importantly, a time to encounter Jesus. We will begin the evening worshiping the King of Kings with Pastor Ryan Kite and his lovely bride, Lindsay. Afterwards, you will be blessed to hear from both of our pastors, Pastor Brian and Pastor Jay. At the end, I will see you again to close us out. We do have a few minutes before getting started, so grab your family, warm your coffee, grab your blanket, and prepare a space in your heart to hear from God. Also, please invite some friends on social media. We would love to have families all over the Hampton Roads worshiping in their homes this evening and encountering God in a way like never before. Hey, Seven Cities Church, we are so excited to be with you today. It's Ryan and Lindsay. So I just want to encourage you, let's clear away distractions and give him our best praise. And just remember, he is truly glorious and worthy of all uh, we can give him today. So let's lift it up.
Here in this 
Come on, somebody. Aren't you glad that Jesus changes everything? He can change your circumstance. He can change your situation. Let's pray together. Father God, we are so thankful for this moment. We're so thankful for the opportunity to gather together. I know we're not in person, but God, I pray right now that you would, you would encounter, you would have an encounter with everyone who is watching, Father, that we would be able to experience you, to encounter you in a way that maybe we haven't in a long time or, or maybe we haven't ev ever, Father. I pray right now that you would, you would meet us in our living rooms. You would meet us uh, wherever we're watching this, Father. I'm so thankful that where two or more are gathered, you are here. Your presence is here. And I pray right now, God, that you would break chains tonight. God, the hope is found in you. I pray that you will allow us to experience your glory in a way that we've never experienced before. Father, meet with us here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, welcome. So excited you are here. I am Brian, one of the pastors at Seven Cities Church, and we're going to continue in worship through God's word. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. I, I want to read that again to you or say that again to you. It says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Think about that for a moment. Jesus being led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We're going to jump into that. I want to clear up kind of three things or, or lay a foundation, if you will, before we really dive into that. The first one would be that word tempted. The translation that I'm reading from or sharing from the NLT uses the word tempted. But I want you to know that James reminds us in chapter 1, he says in chapter 1, verse 13, that when someone is being tempted, don't say that God is tempting me. God will never tempt you to do evil. So, so I'm, I take that verse and I'm thinking about Matthew 4, 1, the one I just read. I'm saying Jesus is being tempted. Well, that word tempted actually doesn't mean tempted. It means to be tried or to be tested. So the Spirit has led Jesus into the wilderness to be tested or to be tried. The second thing I want to lay out is the word wilderness. <laughs> Moms and dads, maybe some of you, maybe teenagers as well, maybe you're like, Holy Spirit, lead me to the wilderness. Like, let me get up out of here. Listen, the wilderness oftentimes used in the Bible is this place of, of isolation. It's a place of, of, of solitaire, a desolate place, a place that is often very uh, uncomfortable, and it makes you uh, kind of in this position to where you have to fully rely on on God. And so I want you to keep that in mind as we get ready to dive in. And the last thing as we as we talk about these wilderness seasons that we go through in life, I want to challenge you oftentimes I'm having conversations with people and I've had to even break this mold so to speak in in my life through years. We often uh, kind of equate or connect negative experiences in our lives, the valleys, if you will, the wilderness seasons, we often connect that to punishment from God. And I want to break that tonight. I want you to kind of break that thinking. Obviously, the Bible does talk about how our sin has consequences, but everything that happens from a human perspective that is negative is not punishment from God. And so with, with that perspective, let's, let's dive into this verse, that, that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. What if we had that perspective? What if we shifted our mindset to instead of thinking that God is punishing us, to instead of thinking like, woe is me, what's going on, why is this happening? Every time we go through a wilderness season or a valley or a trial or a, or a tough circumstance, what if we shifted our perspective to say, God, do you have me here for a reason? Like, has the Spirit led me here? Now, I don't want to confuse you or make you think that, again, God is causing every single thing. I do believe that God is sovereign. He's in control. He's on the throne. But everything that happens in our life, God has not put us there. He allows things to happen, but it's not, again, it's not this punishment. So what if we, what if we shifted our perspective? What if we thought about the, th the times that we were in the wilderness rather than saying, oh my gosh, what have I done wrong? Or why is, you know, why are you making this happen? Like, God, have you led me here for a reason? I believe that it changes things. I believe that it changes the way that we view a season. I believe it changes our perspective. I believe it changes the way we act, the way that we respond when we're in that wilderness, when we're in that valley. 
Like, think about 2020. I mean, come on. Every single one of us, I think it's safe to say, has experienced some type of wilderness activity or wilderness season or, or wilderness day or weeks or months or maybe you're like the whole year. Like, we've experienced that. But how many times have we shifted our perspective to say, you know what? I'm not going to focus on the wilderness. I'm going to focus on what God wants to teach me here. I'm going to focus on what God wants to strengthen me in. I'm going to focus on my relationship. And I'm going to come out of this better than I came into this. Through this season, uh, my 12-year-old, my oldest son, went to bed one night with a headache, woke up the next day with a fever, and I woke up and had that gut feeling. I just knew what was taking place. And so I picked him up. We went to the doctor. He got tested for COVID-19 and obviously tested positive. And I remember the nurse saying, hey, you got two weeks quarantine. You got to isolate him. And at the forefront of my mind, the very first thing, obviously, I was concerned and worried about my kid's health and the health of those that had been around my son in in recent hours and, and recent days. But secondly, right under that, if I can be transparent with you, the selfish part of me, and if you know me, you know I was cringing hearing this physician tell me that I had to stay in my house for 14 days and not come around people, not go anywhere, not leave. I was going crazy from the beginning. About three days in, that was my perspective. Like, come on, man, what the heck? Why is this happening? Why do I have to sit here in quarantine? You know I don't like this, God. You know this isn't me. You know I need to be out talking to people. And I had this very negative mindset. And after about day three, God really kind of taught me. He really kind of just punched me, if you will, in a good way. But but I, I learned in that moment to embrace it. I said, listen, I'm, I'm in this season. It's out of my control. I'm in this wilderness, if you will. And I'm not trying to compare. You know, I know people are, are, are facing a whole lot more challenging things than, than two weeks of quarantine. But, but here's the lesson. I embraced it. And you know what happened the next 11 days? It was some of the best 11 days that I've had with my family in a long time. Because I quit focusing on the negative. I quit focusing on the wilderness. And I was forced to slow down. I was forced, not that I have to be forced to do this, but I was forced to spend time with my kids. All the distractions of going to gymnastics and school and the grocery store, all of that was taken away. And I was placed in this position to where I came out stronger than I came in. My family came out stronger than we came in because we learned what God was trying to teach us. Again, I'm not saying God said, all right, Grayson, you're going to get COVID because this is what's going to happen. But Through that situation, through that circumstance, I came to a place, thankfully, I'm not tooting my horn, it took a few days, to where I didn't focus on the negative, and I allowed God to teach me and mold me, and I came out of this wilderness season better than I came in. And so I say all that to say, what if you're being led to a place by the Spirit for a very specific purpose? What if the things that you're facing, what if the situation that you're in, what if the circumstances and all the things that are around you, maybe in your family, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's finances, maybe it's with your kids, maybe it's with your job. Like, What if the very thing that you're in, God has led you to this place so that he can teach you, mold you, shape you, and make you better as you come out? As I think about the Spirit of God, led Jesus, the Son of God, fully man, fully God, to a place in the wilderness to be tried. Like, don't try me. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have that mentality. Like, don't at me. But he's being tried and tested by Satan. And you know what happened? He used scripture to come back at Satan and his messianic nature, who God was, was basically put on full display. And we get to read about it. We get to see that. Like, what if we went through these wilderness seasons and says, God, you know what? I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. The Holy Spirit who lives inside of me, he may lead me. He may guide me. He may encourage me. He may counsel me. He may convict me. But it's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And I want that power. And so so here's the challenging question for you. Here's the challenge. Are you willing, because uh, let me back up actually, as believers, oftentimes this is what we say, Holy Spirit, 
I want, I, lead me. God, I want to be where you are. Lead me to wherever it is. Like, Holy Spirit, I want to be filled. I want more of you. I want my relationship to grow with Jesus. Here's the challenge. Are you willing to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit if he's leading you to a place that you don't want to go? Let, let me ask you that again. Are you willing to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit if he's leading you to a place that you don't want to go? Guys, as I think about the Israelites in the Old Testament, if you don't know that story, just a really quick snapshot in like 12 seconds. They were in slavery in Egypt. God freed them and was leading them to the promised land, this this amazing promise that God had in store. But in order for them to get there, they had to go through the wilderness. And you know what happened? Instead of embracing the wilderness, they wanted to go back to what was comfortable. And instead of enduring and facing the uncomfortable and learning and being shaped and being molded into who God wanted them to be so that he could prepare them to enter into the promise that he had for them, they missed out. Why? Because they focused on the wilderness rather than focusing on him. And so the challenge, as we continue the challenge of of being led by the Spirit, would simply be this. If you're in a wilderness season, and if you're not, let me encourage you. There's one coming. (laughs) All right? I know it's not very encouraging, but it's life, right? We're we're full of ups and downs. But those wilderness seasons, they are so much easier, if you will. I shouldn't even say that. They're so much better. There you go. If we will focus on Jesus instead of the wilderness. Stop focusing on the situation and focus on Jesus. And he will strengthen you and bring you out to experience something far greater than yourself. Guys, I just want to encourage you for just a moment. Listen, we are going to get through this and you are going to be okay. You're going to make it You're going to come out of this strong. I know some of you right now are so exhausted. You are so weary. You are so ready to throw in the towel. Towel. Listen, the spirit who lives in you wants to do something in your life. And I promise you, if you will fix your eyes on Jesus, you will enter into something that is far greater than you have experienced in your life. There is something on the other side that is waiting for you. And Jesus is the the man, the one who changes everything. Let's let's just say his name out loud, wherever you are, Jesus, right now. He's, He's the name above every name. He's the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and it's a beautiful name, and his name is Jesus.
from or how they're watching God that you just intervene on their behalf God that you God have a purpose a plan you call them son you call them daughter and God we ask that you just bless pastors Jay and Brian bless their families God as they go forth God as they carry out this calling God we just ask for a fresh anointing to fall yes. in the mighty name of Jesus God yes. we bless you tonight God we worship you Today, God, in everything, God, that you do, in your mighty, powerful name, amen. Amen. I want you to take a moment right there where you are, right there in this moment, and think about his name. Think about the name of Jesus. Think about the name that, at the very sound of his name, Scripture says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Think about the name that has the power that when it's spoken, it breaks addiction, that when it's spoken, it heals depression, that when it's spoken, it can mend broken hearts. Think about the power of that name. You know, and as we come together on a night like this, as we celebrate his name, the name of Jesus, as we kind of just join as a family towards the end of a year that's been very difficult. There's a tendency that when we go through trials, when we go through tribulation, even if it's that circumstance that Pastor Brian talked about, where we are led by the Spirit into a wilderness because he wants to mold us and shape us and change us, a lot of times in the middle of that, we tend to get heavy hearted. Our heads tend to drop. We tend to carry the weight of the world. And many of us have been walking through this year with our heads bowed down like this. But I want to encourage you to lift up your eyes. I want to encourage you to lift up your eyes and look to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I want to encourage you to look up to heaven and see where your hope comes from. Psalm 121 says this. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. You know, I remember back in the early 2000s, I used to work for Verizon. And back in that time, I was battling some different things in my life. And I had this one coworker, her name was Melissa Lindsay. And one day as I was walking down the aisle, as I was so apt to do, I was walking with my head down and I was just walking along. And one day she said to me, she said, hey, Blizz. I said, yeah, what's up? She said, pick your head up, pick your head up. She said, I'm tired of seeing you walk around with your head down. You act like you have no confidence. You act like you're not going somewhere. You act like you have no purpose, but you have a purpose. She said, pick your head up. So I want to encourage you to lift up your eyes. Again, that scripture said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Are you looking for help tonight? Are you sitting here with your family and with your friends in your living room? Maybe you're in your bedroom and you're all alone and you're watching this and you're looking for help. You're looking for answers. You're questioning God saying, why is all this happening, Lord? Why have I found myself in this place? I want to encourage you to lift up your eyes. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King, in one of my favorite speeches by him, the night before he was assassinated, he gave a speech called, I've been to the mountaintop. 
And in that speech, he talked about how men, after they had been through trial and tribulation, they had a tendency to be hunched over. He said, but man, it's time for us to straighten our backs up because when a man straightens his back up, you know he's going somewhere. And I want to encourage you tonight just by saying, you know, we have a plan and a purpose. God is leading us somewhere. I want you to lift up your eyes. I want you to straighten up your back. You have been called by the king of the universe. You have been chosen by the Holy One of Israel. You are a child of God. If you've received this gift of salvation, I want to encourage you to lift up your eyes. But, you know, as we read through that passage in Psalm 121, where he says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? The psalmist was almost saying it in a mocking way. He wasn't saying that his help comes from the hills. If you remember the story of the Good Samaritan, this man was on this journey. And as he was going along on his journey, he was robbed and beaten and stripped naked and left for dead. See, it was commonplace in that time that when people would journey towards Jerusalem, that they would have to go through some valleys because Jerusalem was up on a hill. The city was surrounded by hills. And oftentimes the only place they could find help was by looking to the hills. So the hills in that psalm represent my help coming from man. The hills in that psalm represent my help coming from people who had the capability of helping me. But when the psalmist says that my help comes from the Lord, what he's really saying is lift up your eyes, but don't stop at the hills. Keep looking up to heaven. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says that we need to keep our eyes in heaven, that we should keep our eyes above uh, with Christ where he's seated at and not on things below. And as you think about this idea of us being led by his spirit, you know, if you're walking through life with your head down, if you're walking through life with your shoulders hunched over because you've been carrying so much weight, if you're walking through life with all these burdens on your shoulders, how are you going to be led by his spirit if your eyes aren't focused on him? I want to encourage you to lift up your eyes. But don't lift up your eyes just to the hills. Don't look to man to help you. Don't look to other resources to help you. Don't look to your job to help you. Don't look to the government to help you. Lift up your eyes above the hills. Focus your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and perfecter of your faith. The one who endured the cross in your place and in my place. We need to lift our eyes up to him because it's in him that we find the encouragement that we need. It's in him that we find the hope that we need. It's in him that we find the purpose that we need. If our eyes are constantly down on the things of the world, you're going to be discouraged. You're going to lose hope. You're going to lose faith. And, you know, as we just sing, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. Many of you are looking for Jesus. You're listening for his voice. You're calling out his name. You feel like you don't see him or his Holy Spirit anywhere around and you don't hear him clearly. But I want to tell you, you don't have an ear problem. You have an eye problem. Your eyes are focused in the wrong place. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes to heaven. Focus on the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the one who will see you through. If your eyes are fixed on Jesus, you'll be able to clearly follow his spirit and you'll be able to lead others to him because they will see the hope and the purpose that is in you, that your eyes are focused on something far greater than anything and everything that you and I are facing right now. They will see that in Jesus there is hope for them and you can lead them to a place where they can encounter him just as you have. If you want to see real life change in your family, if you want to see real life change in your friends, if you want to see life change in your coworkers and the people you've been praying about, if you want to see life change in your own life, lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes. And so I want to challenge you right now as you sit there in your living room, as you sit in your bedroom, maybe you're sitting outside Starbucks because you don't have Wi-Fi at home, whatever your situation may be. I want to challenge you right now in this moment to lift up your eyes. Don't carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. Don't live with your eyes down, focused on the world. Lift up your eyes above the hills. Focus on the one who gave himself for you. Focus on the one who's chosen you. Focus on the one who has called you and given you a holy calling. Focus on the one that will give your life purpose. Lift up your eyes above the hills. Father, thank you so much just for this time where we could come together as your children, this time where we could worship together, where we could sing praise together, where we could worship your holy name. Lord, I pray that you would help us 
to lift up our eyes. And even in the seasons where we've been led by your spirit to the wilderness, Father, help us to see your greater purpose in that. Help us to see that you have led us there to teach us, Father, that we will go through trials and we will come out the other side. Like James said, that we should count it all joy when we endure trials and tribulation because that produces patience in us and that we should let patience be completed in us because that brings glory to you. Help us, Father, to see through your eyes. Help us to trust that all things work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And help us to be okay with not being the ones to define what good is. Help us to trust in you, Lord. Help us to trust in your name. Jesus, what a beautiful name it is. Lord, and as we worship you tonight, I pray that you received our worship. I pray that you received this offering of our praise and that you were glorified in it. Father, we thank you for what you are doing here in the seven cities and beyond. Father, we thank you for all that you've called us to. Lord, we pray that you send revival to this place, Father. But let it start in each one of us. Let it start in our homes. Let it start in our hearts. Let it start with our families. And then let it spring out and let the world around us be touched by you for your kingdom and your glory. Lord, we praise you and we worship you because you alone are worthy to be praised. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow, tonight was incredible. Yes, it was. I am so honored and blessed that you guys have joined us. I hope that you were encouraged. I hope you were challenged. I hope you found value. And I hope that we can see you again. I know I'm personally super excited. I hope you are, babe. Uh, January 3rd, our online campus is going to be launching. We are so excited about it, and we would love for you to get involved. We are still planning and prepping and digging and working hard, and uh, man, we have an incredible launch team, and we would love for you to join that launch team as well. And so if you're interested, want to know more about the church, want to know how to join our launch team, send us an email, info, 7 vacom and we would love to connect with you. And so, babe, why don't you tell them uh, a couple more things or ways that they can get involved with Seven Cities as well? Sure. Um, if you head over to our social media page, we are currently doing um, a Thanksgiving basket giveaway. Um, we have seven baskets that we are giving away to families around the Hampton Roads that are in need this Thanksgiving. Um, all you have to do is nominate somebody or if you yourself are in need, um, just send us, or send us your story to info at sevencitieschurchva.com. Or you can do that on social media as well in a private message. And the last way you can get involved is by giving. As Pastor Brian said, we're super excited about our online campus um, and we are still trying to raise our pre-launch budget. So if you would like to give, you can give online. Yeah, you can do that at uh, sevencitieschurchva.com slash give. It's safe, secure. All of your donations are also tax deductible. And uh, man, we would just be honored if you would sow into what we're doing, what God is doing through Seven Cities Church here in the Hampton Roads. We can't wait to see God move even more. It has been absolutely incredible this far, and we want you to be a part of it. And so if you have any questions, send us an email, info, sevencitieschurchva.com, and we will see you guys soon. Hey! <laughs>